Hey guys, have you ever struggled to keep your Unity scenes clean and organized? One way to achieve this is by using states, a concept commonly used in game development. In this video, I will break down how it works and show you an advanced implementation provided by alchemivo.core. So, let's start with an example. Imagine a simple RPG game. When you enter the scene, you can control the character, interact with the world, and so on. But when you click the escape button, those parts of the simulation become inactive, and you can only see the pause menu, which provides other options. These two different modes of the scene can be called states. The game state enables and disables parts of the scene associated with the game world, while the pause state only controls the part connected to the pause menu. Each state has a defined list of states it can transition to, and each such transition is guarded by a condition which must be met for the transition to occur. All these parts together create a graph called the finite state machine. However, alchemivo.core provides you with an implementation of the hierarchical finite state machine that expands the concept with nested states, allowing you to better organize your code and make it more modular. For example, you could have two states inside the game state, the movement state and the equipment state. In this case, the game state itself could still control the rendering of the world, but for example, the system responsible for controlling the character would be managed by the child states, so it's only active in the movement state but not the equipment state. Now, let's move on to practice and see how it works in alchemibo.core. Creating a state is very simple. All you need is iState interface, which introduces two methods, enter and exit. You can use them to toggle the associated parts of the scene. The state itself can be a regular c -sharp class, or it can inherit from other classes. For example, MonoBehavior, which would allow it to receive Unity callbacks directly. When it comes to getting dependencies, the best way is to use injection, but you can also rely on serialization or any other method you like. Creating a condition is very similar, so everything I said about states applies here as well. However, this time you need a condition interface, which introduces the following members. The triggered event that should be raised when the condition should be checked. The check condition method that should return true if the condition is met. The set active method, which is called when the associated state is entered or exited. The most common implementation of a condition is a trigger. It can look like this. The public trigger method sets the internal value to true and raises the triggered event. And the setActive method is used to reset the condition. Such a condition can be injected anywhere and used to trigger a transition. For example, in the reaction to player clicking the resume button. You can create numerous behaviors on your own, but this one is so common that the framework already contains it. The class is called prototype condition. Finally, let's build a state machine that corresponds to the example from the beginning of the video. For clarity, let's use the core controller directly and assume that all members are regular c -sharp classes that use injection to get potential dependencies. First, we want to create all the states and conditions. In order to have them injected, we can override the install additional bindings method. Then, we can start building the machine. To do so, we use state graph composers. Let's create one for each state and one additional that will act as a root state. In our case, there is no parent state for the game and the pause state, so we can simply pass null. Next, let's use the composers to build the hierarchy. After that, we can set up the transitions. Parent composers can define linking for their children with specified conditions. Finally, we can build the state machine and connect it to the scene lifecycle by calling enter in onloading finished method and exit in the onscene change started method. There are two more things worth mentioning. First, you can validate the composition of the state machine before building it. Second, there is the enumerate down method that you can use to perform operations on the states in order from the parent to the leaf. So, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one. Please like, subscribe and if you have any questions, leave a comment down below. Also, check the framework documentation page for more, all the links in the bio.